verse 14. Make yourself an ark, God says. Verse 13, God said to Noah, I intend to make an end of all flesh. For through men the land is filled with violence. And behold, I will destroy them and the land. The world is full of violence. But at the end of the day, his judgment will be on the land. But who will be safe? The one that built an accurate lifestyle. Who built an ark for their lives. For you, your wife, your kids. For you and the people that you influence. The people that you disciple. For you, who you've placed your life into them. And they are accurate. They are discipled by you. Hello? For that company of people, build an ark. How? By walking before the Lord, blameless. By standing in His righteousness, not in your own righteousness. By walking in faith. And then hearing from Him every, every little detail of how to build this ark. I think it was very frustrating at the year of 99 years old. Now that was... Abram, I can't find him no other place. He got the command to walk blameless at 99 years old. Yes, but after that and in that all, that like Noah, who must build an ark, step by step, accurately, with not this amount of inaccuracy because they can all drown. Uh uh-uh. And he, the people can mock him, and they mocked him. What on earth are you doing? You are wasting your time. And you can feel, and your flesh can feel, you can, I'm wasting my time. And you say, you don't have the time. You don't always have the time. People must understand. But if God has called you in this body, you better be here. If God has called you into that cell, you better be there. Unless in your arrogance you believe you will do it on your own. It's okay. But otherwise, you may make a decision, you will follow God's principles, and you will create an accurate life. And you will build an accurate ark that will not drown. Hello? Or you will build, like we said this morning, the Titanic, and everybody is excited about what you are doing. Wow, wow, wow. Every step of the way. Wow, the people, wow, about your ministry, about your life, about your success and everything. And you were not prepared for that iceberg. You were not prepared for that moment. And even as that guy said, not even God can sink. Not even God can sink this, this boat, this ship. Many times, many people in different times in, in history had a certain level of arrogance and then God had to deal with them severely. Look at the empires, the Roman Empire, each one of them was stood with certain, what's the word, <clears throat> arrogance. Certain facets of America, certain facets of so many nations of a communist world, they are the feared people. How they stood with arrogance against the church of God. And it was just in a few months, <laughs> it's gone. You with me? Will your life be just one day, just be gone because of arrogance and saying it was God, but you didn't realize that this was your own doing, how you destroyed your life through inaccurate living. You need your brothers and your sisters to tell you how to build your ark. But it wasn't not him alone in that ark. Maybe you must take two baboons with you. Your neighbors. No. <clears throat> be accurate with God. Be accurate in how you will build and make sure that you build your, your destiny in the way that God tells you step by step. You will be frustrated because you will see so many other opportunities and you have so many opportunities in your life. Because God has given us gifts, talents, abilities. And I can easily just go with that and make a success with it. Because that was from God. That talent is from God. That ability, that intellectual capacity. What you have, it wasn't given by the devil. 
but you can pollute it, you can waste it by not using it with God's hand and your hand in the same way. Hello? But you will touch that talent without his hand. Then what are you doing? Because that talent is given by God. You don't touch that unless God says. Or you don't want to touch it because you fear you will fail. That's your own performance. Then you will never develop in what God has for you. Substandard you will live. No. Hello? Make sure you are working with the Holy Spirit in how you will build your life. Make sure you're working with the Holy Spirit in how you will be accurate. And it will be frustrating. You will be frustrated like John. No, like Hebrews 12 says, discipline. This was the sark van Drufeit. But at the end, it produces a fruit of righteousness. A fruit of right standing. A fruit of authority. A fruit where you stand by faith and where you go, breakthrough, 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 wherever you go. So that at the other end of the storm, you're the man with an excellent life. There's a world around you that is from God. Because on the other side of the ark, when everything disappeared, there was a Noah and a family and all the animals of this earth in a new world, a new world order. <clears throat> Bring your new world order through accurate living. Amen. Let the people see what is the new world order. What is the order for the new world that is coming? Amen. Amen. You with me? Or they will just create it, but the church sit with ignorance and do nothing except instead of them leading and the church leading and showing what will be the new order all about. The new world order will be what? Church, will you show it? Will you show it to Bloemfontein, to your families, to where? To the university, to the place where you study, your school. What is the new world order? Build that ark. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. When you feel frustrated, you feel discouraged, and there's nobody with you in the sense of, I mean, the brothers and sisters in Christ must be with you in the building. But when you look out in the world, there's all these things that you say to yourself also, I'm wasting, I'm wasting, I'm wasting my life. Even when, when I started, I remember, remember just now, when I started Creare, in that first two years, I said, I'm wasting my life. What on earth am I doing here? And even people said it. A lot of people say it. There I sit giving classes, nearly 90 students per week, giving classes, piano one, and I'm going to die if I hear, Akis Freyom, Jesus, the Lord. I say, I'm free, yes, praise the Lord. But I'm not going to be free to hear this again. <laughs> Hello. And I sit there, and I remember sitting in that office looking at that tree. I remember the tree there looking at the tree and saying, what am I doing? I'm wasting my life. I'm wasting my life. But I think God said I must do this, but I'm wasting my life. I cannot just give all these kiddies just this, I guess, Freyom Jesus to love. Dear, ah, dear, here. And then I must give drama. And then I must give... And then I had to evaluate like Nikki. And you know, she, I did her exams on, on dance. And, and I was thinking, I guess, ma. And people said it. And my family said it. And even one pastor said it that I overheard. Well, I don't know what else is going to happen with him, but that's, that's it. Hmm. <laughs> Hello? But can you surrender your life and go through that frustrations and go through that time that you will do it because God said it and you don't see the end of where it will go to. You see rather that this is a waste of my time. But I will be faithful to God. I will be building. I will do it as if unto the Lord. And sitting there and they pay not even 
five rand a class, you know, and uh, <laughs> and then after six months, and worked like morning, afternoon, evening, then a lot of finances that I would have got, I will not get it anymore. A very unfair situation. And I thought, okay. And I uh, walked to pick and pay from Agape Church, and there was no, because there was no money for petrol. And I was saying, Lord, this is unfair. I'm not going to do this anymore. I've worked my, no, I've worked very hard. <laughs> and, <laughs> I've worked hard. And now they're taking all this money, even this is just corrupt. I will not do this anymore. And as I walked over that bridge, I'll never forget it. You know when you go to pick and pay, you come back, you walk over the bridge, and the, or you drive over the bridge, and uh, um, there's Universitas Hospital, you know. And I walked, and then there at the top, God said, so if you don't get any money, will you not develop that people for me anymore? So I started to count the, the poles, the light poles, the light the light poles. Yeah. <laughs> I realized that I have to answer. And I said, okay, Lord, later. Yes, I will. But I know I had to say it until I'm excited about it. Because there's no honoring to God if I'm not, there's no joy in the offering. Yeah. Woof, it was not good. And after about the sixth, seventh poll at the end, I went back with excitement. And it was when I was back in the student house on my bed, the check with all that money, uh, with all, about all the money. But God had, will put that test in your life. He will put it there because He wants you to grow in Him. It, he wants you to, that it will be all about Him, about Him. He's jealous for your love. He's jealous for your love, and He wants you to build accurately, accurately for you and for others also. Amen? And you'll make mistakes, and I will make a lot of mistakes, and made a lot of mistakes, but in His grace, He's there. He's there for you. He's there for you. Amen. Amen. So I finish off the sons of God in the New Testament. The sons of God was inaccurate. They were inaccurate. Old Testament. And they brought forth that what was giants that stood against the destiny of people. You will bring forth what? New Testament? Child of God? Towards the Father, if you want to be a son of God, you will understand his discipline and you will take his discipline based on the fact that you have a lot of potential. Amen? Because when he accepts you as a child and when he loves you, he will put discipline on you because he believes in you and he believes in the potential that he placed in you. So that you can become a son of God. A son of God is one where it's nothing about you, it's all about him. Not a son of God looking at a beautiful opportunity and go and do whatever he wants in arrogance as like a fallen angel. No. You run into this place where you are open for discipleship, where you will take input from leaders, where you will take input from your brothers, from your father, your mother, from people around you. And hopefully not at the end of the day, only through circumstances. But you will be open because you want to be a son of God. Amen? Towards the Father, you will take the discipline. With the Holy Spirit, we see in Romans 8 verse 14. 8 verse 14. Those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Towards the Spirit, you will be led by Him. Not led by good ideas. You need to figure it out. Take the discipline from the Father. In the Word, through the Word, let this Word get in here. And so that the Spirit can use the vocabulary of the Word in your life. If you don't have the vocabulary, how will the Holy Spirit guide you? Hello? This is the language of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Learn the language so that the Spirit can guide you if you want to be a son of God. You can stay an immature child and waste your life on earth. You will go to heaven. But you will for eternity know you've wasted your life on earth with all the opportunities that God had for you. Become a son of God. Amen.